board meeting? Um, I move that we uh, open the select board meeting at uh, 6.32 p.m. I will second that. All in favor? Okay. We're open. Carolyn. I move that we open the CCI meeting at 6.32 p.m. Sounds good. Second. Okay, thank you. All right. So, Lily, would you read, read your- the hoo -ha. <laughs> Welcome to the Connecting Community Initiative Joint Meeting with the Select Board, February 13th, 2023, starting at 6.32 p.m. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with chapter 107 of the acts of 2022 which extended the governor's march 12 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law mass general laws chapter 30a section 20 until march 31st 2023 the Zoom link can be found on the town website, and we hope everyone will join us soon. Thank you, Lily, and I do appreciate your enthusiasm as you read that. All right. Okay. <laughs> Meeting guidelines speak one at a time, follow Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, non repetitive. Please raise your hand to be recognized by the chair so you do not, you know, get demerits. Okay. So I'm going to take roll call. Uh, Jim Cambius. Present. All right. Julie Chelfont. Here. Lily. Here. here. Tim Hilchey. He's here. I see him muted. Andrea. Here. Here. I'm here. Trevor. Not yet. Uh, Carolyn. Here. You're here. John Pachorek. Here. Okay. M.A. Here. M.A. and her sidekick will be <laughs> are here. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, approve the minutes from January 18th, 2023. If everyone has had a chance to read them, any additions? Um, I move that we uh, accept the minutes as presented. I I just would want to say that Ben Wheel spends his, spells his name W E I L, and not W H E E L. No, oh. just a correction. <laughs> Thank you. That's that is important correction. Thanks. Can you repeat the spelling, please? M A -E W I W E I L. Okay. Uh, the the minutes have been prepared. I, I move that we accept the minutes as. Amended. Sorry about that. I should have done it sooner. Okay. No, okay. John, I'll second it. No one is opposed. The minutes will be. Okay. Thanks, Lily. Thanks, MA, for catching that. All right. So, how about we start off with reports? And I'm going to start with, I'll give Annalise. Um, she just wanted to say that we're continuing with the VESH, which is the veterinary clinic. They want to add a parking lot. Another parking lot, I can see why, because they're jammed all the time. So that's still in process. Um, sunny days, we're going to go and have a site visit and, you know, bushwhack through the woods to see <clears throat> what's happening with that at some point. And that is the um, marijuana place that they'll have a, let's see, a retail, a grow facility, and a testing facility. So we'll continue to give you updates on that. And then we also had, we did start a public meeting on accessory dwelling units, but we only had two people participate. So we didn't feel that we had enough input for that on the draft. And fortunately, Chris Larrabee, our reporter, who's really good, did put a piece in the paper. It is on March 6th at 6.30. So I encourage anybody and everybody to attend that public hearing to voice your opinion. Okay, so that's Annalise's report. And um, excuse me, can I, uh, may I add one thing, Denise, yes. uh, which may be of interest to people. Um, Ember Gardens has <laughs> withdrawn its proposal, and so it is not going to be on Mill Village Road or in Deerfield, anywhere. Yes, that is correct. 
And the unfortunate thing with Ember Gardens is that the whole parcel is together and that includes the two homes that the lawns have not been mown for the past year or so. So they'll, they're either gonna have to separate those properties or I don't know what's gonna happen with the two houses, but that could be a potential issue. Is and, that, that's the one that's, uh, that was Yap's? Yes, yes Yap and, and then the other house. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. His, his cousin, I think. Right. Right. Um, so. That means they're leaving town completely. They're done, gone. Yeah, as far as I know. Early. Early. Yeah, which is too bad. So, Stupid. all right. That was a waste. Yeah, I know. Not the greatest news. All right. Um, M.A., how about giving your report? Okie dokie. Um, let's see. We, I met today with the UMass students uh, that are doing the solar study for us. And um, very enthusiastic, very smart young women. Um, they have given us a draft uh, solar resource and infrastructure report, which you, Denise, I think saw. I can't remember. I meant to post it on the website, CCI website. I may or may not have. I will if I haven't. Uh, it's a very long document, but it really talks, it gives a lot of information about Deerfield um, that probably none of us knew, like where all our electrical lines run, where, you know, uh, all the different, the, the square footage of rooftops that we have. The, I mean, it's unbelievable. Now, it's, they don't talk about which roof, rooftops face which direction or anything like that, but they've, They've gone through with, um, what is it, GSI or GIS or whatever that, mm -hmm. and have assessed all this stuff. I mean, they've done a phenomenal, it's a, it's a 40 page document um, with just details about our infrastructure. How, how much solar we have now, how much, you know, it's amazing. So I'll put that on the website. It's a draft at this point, and there's quite a few errors because they're operating off of information with no knowledge of Deerfield. So they're just looking at websites, they, you know, this and that. So uh, I'd love to have you guys uh, take a look at that and send in, send me corrections because by the end of February, we have to have any, any uh, additional information that we want to submit to them to have it be a more uh, full report. Yeah, I, I just want to say, M.A., um... Something that we ran into is that in the HUD data, if they're using the HUD database to determine our housing, it is seriously wrong because it claims we have had zero um, homes built since in the last since 2011. Um, I don't think they are. Okay, but, I don't know. but you might want to just check with they them. Don't, they don't talk about new construction. So no, 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 this is just talking about the total. If you're determining oh, the, the number of built in home and built environments in town, Ooh. depending on what their source is, if it's yeah. HUD, um, what was it, Carolyn? 78? 78, 78 unit or housing units total in the last 10 years. Um, net that takes care of all the demos that happened as well. But it's it's not updated since 2011. Right, there's 78 units missing. Oh, that's what that's what you were saying. That's what I'm saying. So 78 rooftops. <laughs> yeah, I'll check and see what what. Uh, yeah, just check their, where their source is from. Okay. Um, so they are also putting in the process right now. Their next step is to put together a survey that they want to send out or get out to residents asking them and actually it's very educational um they're they're not they're hopefully they'll, it'll be done by the end of the month and they've just started working on it but it's a survey about everything you could imagine about solar and it's it's incredibly educational uh talking about different types of solar how you know third party ownership community owned all you know everything you could imagine um, and and just trying to um, provide get a questionnaire for residents 
um, to sort of get a sense of where Deerfield is, what in and particularly in relation to funding. Mm -hmm. So if they so you can use this document to say our our people in town really would like this to happen. Everybody in town is so in favor of this happening, whatever it is. Um, and, and other things. So we can use it for a variety of things. So they're in the process of putting that together. Um, and let's see, we, tomorrow we're meeting with uh, David and I are going to go, uh, David, Gilbert Keith and I are going to go to Frontier School Committee meeting and begin a conversation with them, which hopefully will involve all the towns um, about the, our, you know, how do we, how do we put together a long range plan to get off fossil fuels at the front at frontier. And, um, so that's, that's a beginning conversation and it's came from our conversation, our sort of came in too late, uh, didn't know the politics. <laughs> conversation with Frontier about the boilers mm -hmm. and they are buying all new boilers and they're not, you know, that's, they had already decided that. And so we got in too late on that, but so we decided to try and really spur a conversation with them. And also we're talking to Annie Curtis for the same conversation. And she's got three people, I think three additional people from the elementary school committee that are interested in having that conversation. And they're gonna form a subcommittee, I think, to basically say, how can we plan to be off fossil fuels in 10 years? All right, thank you. Tim, I believe you have a question. Um, <clears throat> I had a, a question about, um, when you say this is a survey, you mean a, a questionnaire or do you mean yeah. a survey of, re of research? No, a questionnaire. Okay. To, uh, just asking people sort of what they think about okay uh, and and also sort of checking out sort of what people know and and um because what the, their charge in this class is to put together a solar plan for the town of Deerfield oh, not just municipal but everything so um you know do we want to do we want to start a do we want to do a program that encourages businesses you know, to put solar on their roofs, because there's a lot of flat roofs out there that could have solar on them. And if so, how do we go about that? And, you know, so that's, they're going to keep, they'll work through this semester, and then the faculty will work with us in the summer and beyond. Okay. And implement that. How the survey, how they're planning on distributing that survey or the, the questionnaire? Uh, that questionnaire is, we talked about that a lot today, because they didn't really know, and there will, they will be available in town hall. We're going to put it on Deer, available on Deerfield now. It'll, uh, it'll go on the town website. They'll, they'll do a mailing, mm -hmm. uh, and copies will be available at town hall, etc. And I was going to talk to, uh, uh, responsible Deerfield responsible development folks send it out and so that they could send it out via their email. And I don't know whether Ava's email is the same as Pat's. So either both or one. Uh, that So we went through that. I said, if they really want to be ambitious, they could go stand out on Saturday at, at the transfer station. They didn't seem too enthusiastic. About that. Yeah. <laughs> so MA, may I ask, is is the survey going to be done um, electronically? Is it going to be Survey Monkey or something? I don't know the the actual method, uh, but yes, okay. it'll be electronic. I mean, it'll be all of the above. Okay. Um, I attended a webinar last week about uh, this is for open space, and it had to do with uh, querying people in surveys, and they just found when so they thought, oh, we'll do paper surveys. It'll be so easy. We'll send the in, the surveys out turned out that the um, compiling of the um, of the data was horrible because they didn't they hadn't really banked on how hard and how long it would take to um, to to enter all the data so I would highly encourage them to make sure it's mostly electronic I think it'll be mostly electronic I think they'll they said they were gonna because of the cost of mailing I mean mm -hmm. there are some people who will want it 
So, but the cost of mailing and the and the and the difficulty of distribution, there will be you know they'll have some at the library, they'll have some at town hall, and right. they'll mail some out. But no. Okay. Yeah, before Leah, I figured that's going to be their problem because Andrea, we found that if you do everything electronic, half the town isn't going to fill it up because they don't know how to use a computer. Okay. However, I, I just want to point out that for the open space survey that we did. We got about 300 surveys, only 10 were on paper. So well, don't, that's good. But, so don't yeah. discount, don't discount you know, that. Yeah. Right, and yeah. I think it's, it's speaking from the senior housing perspective, we were very, very challenged because ours was only online. And yeah. that conceivably is also because of who we were going for, the 55 plus. But the one thing I would say as someone who used to work in a market research company doing the tech, you need, if you want it to be considered a valid survey, everybody needs to have some sort of a key or an identifier yeah. so that you can be sure that nobody is sending in three surveys or 10 surveys or whatever. I, I, I mean, if you're going to use it for funding and things like that, um, that's that has a lot right. to do with the validity, which is why. All right. Thank you for that. That's I will pass that on to them. I would okay. hope that their professor would know that as well. Anyway, theoretically, okay. they know these things, but I, I don't know. Any other questions for MA? That's a lot of information. Good information. Thank you. That's exciting. Okay, well, I'm going to start with John. What's happening? Did you say John? John. Nice. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> nothing really new on my side. I've reached out to Deerfield Academy to figure out the. Uh, when we can possibly start some renovation work over at the church. They have not gotten back to me as of yet. And the park is pretty much uh, the same uh, stage in which I reported last month. So no new developments there. So I think that's it for me. I'm quick, simple, and easy. <laughs> it was my understanding that, that DA was not going to do anything until we did the asbestos removal. But that may just be a rumor. I don't know. We'll yeah, no, I'll talk to him about that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Questions for John? No. Ooh, moving right along. Carolyn, you're next. Um, the letter of intent was submitted by the Municipal Vulnerability um, Preparedness Committee uh, to the select board. The select board endorsed it and it went out. It includes um, green parking lot. Uh, infrastructure for the Leary lot, the Deerfield Elementary Green entryway, uh, tree preservation strategies under the Healthy Soils Implementation Plan, uh, installation of tree box filters and rain gardens in Old Deerfield as you come down the hill in front of the church there. Um, there's quite a lot of runoff there uh, that we're hoping to filtrate and um, distribute and clean up. So we'll we hear back fairly soon, I think within the month. and. Um, then we will submit a formal uh, grant application. I think in March, right? Yeah, that's all I have. Wow. Yeah, unless an MA wants to add more. I well, missed one of our meetings, so. Cool, good, wonderful. Did oh, you I, I have a question, Carolyn, sorry. Uh, how are we doing on, on any kind of money for uh, meadows and and green and uh, no mow lawn? Well, I, have just, I've been bugging uh, Tom Anderson from EEOA and he promised that it would happen at the end of uh, December, at the end of January, it is now mid-February. We have our Franklin Conservation District board meeting. We already voted to uh, support the plant list at nurseries back in December because you had to do that to reserve a plant list. So I'm going to propose to the board that we move ahead um, with because we're supposed to be assured this grant, so we're going to move ahead because we want Owen Wormser to be um, to do the outreach meetings for at least two days in March, either one dime during the week and then one Saturday. We will be raffling off books, um, mm -hmm. actual installation um, designs for people that win, and um, then actual plants. So. We're hoping that that will happen um, in the, you know, after the Wednesday's vote. And um, 
we got an extra $20,000 from the state to help with the Healthy Soils uh, um, implementation, implementation uh, plan on the state level because I happen to sit on that workforce task group. So I don't know what we're gonna do, but we're gonna spend it. So um, hopefully Deerfield will be uh, at, at getting some advantage here and um, people will be excited to come because it's gonna be a raffle based on you get a ticket when you get in the door and you're gonna win if we pick your ticket. So I'm pretty excited about this actually. Um, so I have a question about the Healthy Soils Initiative. Is that something that can address Bloody Brook in the municipal campus? That's what we're trying to do. Okay. Uh, the whole idea is to um, be more resilient because of Bloody Brook. It's the hugest risk we have in center of town. So that was where we, this whole Healthy Soils came from, was to teach people how important it is to have root systems that will filtrate, store water in these intensive events. The whole focus really is on Bloody Brook, but um, you know, hopefully people will choose to participate and choose to come to this because you know it's an enhancement kind of program because you can't force people to participate. So the idea is to get as much participation and as much education as possible out to people all over Deerfield, but it was the focus of Bloody Brook. Thanks. And this was sort of, this was my idea, yard by yard, more resiliency kind of thing to get people perked up and and want to participate versus, you know, this is what you're going to have to do if we're going to be more resilient. So I don't know. And it was an easy way to get money because the state you know, we're trying to um, implement our program based on the state so we can access more money, but the state, you know, just signed off on their implementation program and action plan. And, you know, it's up to the state commission, which I sit on to implement it. And I asked for 350,000 and I got 20. So there's a little bit of shortfall there even to get started. So we'll see what happens. I feel like there's a lot of people that are agitating and hopefully it will, something will pan out. Thank you. We are, thank you we are on the forefront. Deerfield is on the forefront of this, however, thank just to let you know. <laughs> thank you, nice work. Jim. Did you say Tim? Jim, oh, Jim. Jim. I'm sorry, Tim, sorry. Jim. Um, <laughs> just woke up there for a minute. Yeah, let's see. Um, so we had our our library meeting uh, uh, Wednesday the first. Um, uh, I asked about the progress of fundraising, but there is no new information. Um, we did vote to renew the um, fund. You know, er Eric uh, Phelps uh, uh, fundraiser contract, so he's evidently bringing something in. But I have not gotten any new numbers about donations um uh, i assume that denise you and candace have worked out some uh agreeable arrangement about um um the uh building committee well i don't think there's anything to work out i think the select board appointed me to the building committee so okay. i don't know what we did we yeah. did yeah. All right. I don't, well, I don't think there's an an issue with that. Make sure y'all tell the library director and the uh, uh, um, well, kind of the I board guess, trustees that. Yeah. So, um, okay. select board, could you inform? <laughs> I, I, I assumed that they were informed, but I will make sure that Casey um, sends an email to. Right now, it seems like I'm the only point of contact. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure that um, Candace knows that you are an official member of the yeah. building committee. Okay. It's like it prudent to have a planning board member on. I promise to be good, Jim. Right. Lily? Um, yeah, I, I'm putting on the CPC hat right now, and I'll be asking everybody this question, but 
Jim, do you know if the library is coming for CPC money this year? Refresh my memory what CPC stands for. Community Preservation um, Committee will act, so it should be CPA, oh, CPA money. money. Sorry. Um, I don't recall any discussion of that. Um, I don't think that was part of the planning for... I don't believe that was part of the planning for the, the uh, renovation, certainly. And um, I will check. Um, uh, yeah, I thought I thought that they were going to go for the historic preservation um, bucket. But. I will inquire. Okay. The deadline is in two is in two less than two weeks. I will inquire soon then. Yes, I think that'll so probably. If we be want better. CPA, if we want to apply for CPA the, money this year, CPA money. Yes. Okay. I will. I will do that directly. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. So, but is there more? That's Anything all I have to report. Everything else was mostly about, you know, um, we're still trying to figure out an interim location um, for the library. Does anyone happen to know who the new owners of the Cumberland Farms, former Cumberland Farms on the town common uh, in South Deerfield is now? No. Okay. Do we know for sure it's changed hands? Um, that was entirely rumor. So yes, I don't really know. You could probably check through the registry of deeds if okay. someone um, they should. Okay, I guess I can do that. All right, uh, registry yeah. of deeds. You say? All right, I'll check. Yeah, that. I, I would. I would think so. You know, another thing. It was my understanding, and I don't know. Maybe I just hallucinated this, but I thought that as far as what you needed to keep the library going. Someone told me you only need to have one book there. The guidelines are apparently very loose and flexible because, you know, some of these towns, there's literally no place for them to go. So, you know. Right. Okay. So, so basically the plan is finding a place to store a lot of the books when it's in process, but you okay. don't need a huge place for people to, for lending. Well, there's, there's two there's two things. The storing the books, I think, is, I think there are businesses which do that, you know, mm -hmm. like something like Iron Mountain or whatever, where, you know, they've got climate control right. storage, and that would be what it would be. Um, but then there is the requirement to have, uh, to keep the library open in some form, mm -hmm. where people can come in and request books, and, you know, for which can then be cycled back from storage or whatever. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a there's no hard and fast rule about how much of that has to be, how much of the collection has to be there. Merely that some part of it, and I'm guessing that that will be basically the ch a chunk of the children's collection. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need a huge building for people to come in. So you could actually have a smaller place and do what is it, CW Mars, where people could request from other libraries. Right. So I think that that probably makes things a little easier. Right, it would be like um, the library equivalent of those little postal stores, mm -hmm. okay, as opposed to a full up post office. All right, well, I guess we'll talk about that at the next meeting. <laughs> That's great, thanks, Jim. And do you happen to know when the next meeting is of the building committee? I am not yeah. on it, so I don't know. Oh, okay, well, maybe I can find out from Tim. Okay, thanks. Um, I believe, um, Julie, aren't you on it? Yes. Uh, Julie, you're muted. It's February 21st. At what time? At 4.30. 4.30 p.m. By Zoom. Thank you. And I just sent an email to Candace, Casey, et cetera, saying that the select board had named Denise Mason as the planning board representative to the committee. Thanks, Thanks Jim. Tim. I appreciate that. John Pachorek has had his hand up for a while here. He's sorry, John. Is your hand are you, is your hand tired? Sorry. Yeah, I, I just wanted to jump in. I'm on land records, and uh, I've heard the rumor that Cumberland's was sold as well. I asked uh, Bob hmm. over in the planning office and uh, inspection office. He had not heard anything, and I don't see any activity on that deed whatsoever. So I've heard the rumor as well, but it doesn't look like there's any activity at that site. Alas, that would be an ideal location. 
I have always thought so, and we have not had any response from them. So um, I make it an effort for imminent domain will probably generate some response. <laughs> That's why we like you. <laughs> All right, um, Julie, what's new and exciting? Things new and exciting. Um, let's see. Finance committee, we've started into the budget review process. So last week we met and we did financial indicators. Um, and so we should have a final, close to final version of that for this coming week um, for everybody to look at. And then we start into the actual reviews of the budgets. Um, this week is treasurer. Um, we'll do revenue projection and treasurer budgets and then some of the miscellaneous budgets if we have time to get into those. Um, and then we have a tentative schedule laid out going forward, which is published in the um, agenda for the finance committee. So that's available. Um, Emma, you have a question? Uh, not to you. Go ahead. Oh, cool. All right. Um, that's probably it for finance committee for town building advisory committee we have um, a set of um, plans and a description of the proposed work on the 1888 building with a preliminary cost estimate which is very expensive as would be expected um, we're having the town building advisory committee is meeting this Thursday um, the architect will be there. The goal of that meeting is to really understand everything in the um, scope of work for the proposed renovation to the 1888 building. Um, and then there will be discussion about what now. Um, so um, what, what the town building advisory committee will recommend back to this group. Um, a couple of the, I don't know that we're firmly, I, I don't even know that I have a, a firm set of recommendations that we're, we're exploring. Um, there are a couple of ideas to do the full renovation as planned is somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 million, which is a lot higher than we had hoped. Um, they have gone through and looked at some ways to pull that down, some some savings that could be made and can get it down to like eight million, um, which is still kind of high. Um, so looking at those, there's a third option, which is to do just the envelope. So do what's needed to keep water from going in. It would be waterproofing the basement, doing all the windows, doing the masonry. Doing, putting in gutters, which will um, pull the water away from the building. So we have a lot of problems with the brick, with the water coming down and like hitting the ground and coming and bouncing. So like that whole scope of work, which is no elevator, no interior stuff, no interior systems, no, you know, any of that is just the envelope. Um, preliminary estimate on that is wish million. Um, which is something that could be done, that that's something that could be done within the scope of the funding that's available within CPA. Um, we need to get our act together and get our um, application in very rapidly if we're gonna go for CPA funds this year. Um, that is March 1st is the deadline, right? Yes. That, that's in my mind, okay. Um, so I think out of Thursday night's meeting, we will, decide whether to put in an application for that. If we do, we'll, we'll at least start drafting it and then um, uh, probably get more buy-in from other people before actually submitting it. Um, Tim, you've been on the committee. Do you want to add any comments on any of this? I would like to share the screen and ask you a question because Did we're going to print interrupt as scribe because julie cut out when I, from my when she said the amount for the envelope and i need to just grab that oh it's right around two million around two okay sorry about that tim i just didn't want to lose oh, that. that's fine but you have to allow me to share on the screen 
I have to, you say? No, I mean, <laughs> if I'm going to, you have to. <laughs> you will share the screen. <laughs> That's <what you> <laughs> the magic word, Tim. There you go. You it's got important. it. All yours. Take it away, Goldie. All right. Thank you. So this this document I got from uh, the um, summary that was provided on January 26. And I'm trying to understand this, this portion right here. It says estimated con construction cost at bidding, 9.3 million. What is that? that has, huh? Is this not accurate? That's construction cost at bidding, bidding. So you add soft costs oh, to that, which is the price for the architect and the right. OPM and the furniture and the anything we pay for and all of that stuff. So that estimate is old. Um, and there's a newer estimate since then, because we went back and like that was their first estimate they gave us and the OPM especially. But we went through and dug through that and we're like, came and that and we cut that and that's the one that is now down to the 11 million includes all the soft costs and everything so that's the one that's now down to 11 million and that that one comes up to like 13. okay um, so i guess um if you would, could send me the current one that would be great because we're going to yeah. be presenting to jim mcgovern tomorrow and just to finish okay, yeah, yeah. Off, absolutely um and are you going to be able to come to that by the way i'm still struggling with my schedule so I, I think i'm going to cancel something that okay. i was going to do and try and get there um because okay. otherwise i'll deputize for you to talk about the 1888 building but yeah the observations we had was there we had discussions about slate roof non-slate roof half finish the slate roof um but everyone seemed to come down on site if you're going to do this you want to do it right and a slate roof will go last 100 years so rather than just replacing the roof every 25 years with our maintenance schedule that we don't have in town, maybe that was the smart move. Um, and um, there was also discussion about one plan said you could only go up two stories with the elevator, skip the third floor. There was a discussion, well, if you're gonna build the elevator now, why don't you build the elevator all the way to the third floor? Because then you have the option of developing the third floor. If you don't build the elevator to the third floor, you're never gonna develop it. And then there was, well, we could drop this part and we could drop that part. So yeah, I think Julie summarized correctly that it's really a lot of possibilities, but no real clear, smart path. And the well, one recommendation, which I kind of like is, um, well, <laughs> one is we need to really decide what we wanna do with these buildings and um, for sure. And then the second piece of it is if we're going to do, if we're going to do some major renovation of the church building, um, that we could, instead of going to town meeting this year with here's what we want to do for 1888, and then going next year with here's what we want to do for the church building step back for a minute, get the whole, get everything together and present both of them as one package, essentially, probably next year. Um, the exception to that is if we do want to do the envelope idea um, is to, um, that's something that we could do this year strictly under CPA um, if we wanted to, to propose that, but I don't know. Oh, John, you brought up the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yep, I'm happy to scroll through it for a couple of minutes. If anybody wants to see, that's up to you. So, John, are these all, I can't remember, are these all new? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this is what the architect produced. Okay, so is that what we have in the packet? That's the one. Yeah, these are the ones that are in the packet that I'm okay, prepared with you. Okay. That's yeah, why you I, recognize them. <laughs> yeah, I know my eyes are sort of glazing over. So, okay. Julie, um, the envelope work mm -hmm. um, would be something that would be done whatever path you choose, right? So there's yep. nothing, it's not like we're going to spend two million on envelope work and then we have to get rid of a hundred thousand of it if 
unless we do it, blah, blah, blah. It'll be completely additive. It's all work that needs to be done. Right. Um, there would be some, if you do it piecemeal, like if we do the envelope and then they stand down and go away and then somebody else comes back, it's going to be more expensive to do that in two phases rather than to just do the whole thing all at once. But there won't be any work that is then undone, undone gotcha. later. That's just so with the, okay. With the possible exception, you would have to figure out the roof, right? So if the elevator goes all the way up to the third floor, then when you go in, you're going to cut through the roof into it. So we would need to plan in now, essentially, like, do we not do that piece of the roof? Do we do the whole roof? Do we, you know, whatever. Okay. Um, Oof, lots to think about. Um, Alan and Emma, you had your hand up and then Andrea, Emma's hand's been up for a while. You're, you're Hi, everyone. Uh, I wasn't fully focused uh, uh, when you began, began your um, comments, Julie, but um, were you thinking of coming to CPC for $2 million? Is that what you were saying? Possibly. Yeah. yeah. And I think Thursday we will decide if we're going to try and get a, um, an application into you. Okay, um, I just want to alert you and, and everyone else and uh, Lily and I uh, just happened to meet on a computer issue today and, and we're uh, just making a, a couple of comments about this, but um, I, I've been in touch with Brenda at Town Hall regarding what we have available this year in CPEA funds. And I think we're really, um, I would say conservatively, conservatively, we're probably closer to having 1.3 million total for all applications that would come in this round. And of course, for, for the 1888 project, um, so long as it's fitting this, the historical criteria, then we'd probably have to review that as the proposal came in. Um, you know, we just wanna make sure that we fulfill the, uh, the criteria as, as well. But I think uh, there's talk of other proposals coming in. Um, I'm not too aware of what those are. Maybe if anyone else knows of other things planning to come to CPC, this would be a good time to let us know. And Lily asked a question about that earlier. But um, <clears throat> I just, I think we need to be thinking about what's actually in there. Now that doesn't include the 475 that's already set aside. And I, I don't know what how much you've committed of that, but uh, for the 1888, it doesn't include the park funds. It doesn't include the housing funds that we all, we already have a you know certain amount encumbered for projects in, in those that are pretty substantial. Um, and then there's some other uh, funds in just this year's round of historic preservation that's that obligated uh, a 5% or 10% or whatever it is, depending on the category. And um, <clears throat> so, I just want to make everyone aware that that as projects uh, our people are aiming for their March 1st um, proposals that we'll have that opp opportunity to go over this during the month of March before and before town meeting. But there's going to this is going to be probably the first time where we as a CPA CPC committee uh, will have to be evaluating more project requests than there are funds to provide. Thanks. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, you can attribute that to CCI because there's a lot, a lot happening. Um, Andrew, you, Emma, your hand is up. But is that? Yeah, but I want to. I want to ask um, the library. I had a library committee okay. question. Okay. Well, why don't why don't we uh, table that for just a moment and continue? Yeah, that's what I. I've moment. been quietly tabled. Okay. <laughs> so Andrew and then Tim. Hi, so I um, attended a meeting having to do with the Food Bank of Western Mass. And there was somebody from Bank of America there and he was talking about the historic tax credits to preserve and restore historic properties across the country. I think this may be part of that um, grant, app, grant opportunity. I think I've forwarded to you at some point, Denise. So that's, I'm saying to- That was T-Mobile. 
That's T-Mobile. Okay, so here's another one. Bank of America has said it money. Inside. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get this to you. Anyway, there, so I was wondering how much of the two million bucks you're trying to get would come from grant funds. And it looks like here is at least one potential source. I have no idea what the process is. I have applied for Bank of America grants in the past. Um, so um, that could be a, a source of, um, of some funding for the, for the town. That's All right, great. I'll get this to you, Denise. Thank you, Andrew. Yay. I've always got my ears open for money for the Thank town. you, <laughs> as we all should. Okay, Tim. Um, I just wanted to make a plea for everyone to think about at least for the, the, the next year um, that until we can actually get our hands around, what are we gonna do in this campus? Which buildings are we gonna save? That the CPC give very serious consideration to placing a priority on preserving funds um, that are for this project, because this is gonna have more impact on the town than just about any other project that I can imagine. Um, and so I appreciate you know, that you'll be very serious about actually evaluating whether we can move forward. Some of these projects can be funded for very small amounts and there's no question. But, um, but as you know, it is, it, we don't recommend or not recommend we simply say no you can you can recommend or not recommend. and and this request meets the criteria or it does not yeah. um we don't currently have as a policy that we recommend and we never have because we've never had this issue before but i would think that something like if that happens that the we would come to the select board and ask for town priorities Be and uh, you know and and then i guess then like the finance committee would make recommendations on priorities as they, you know, just like as they do in town meeting or something, but it's not the place of the committee to make that recommendation. Our role is to evaluate. the. Um, well, I just want to correct a little bit um, that it's, it's pretty much, I, I spent a lot of time talking to Stuart Saginaw about this and I encourage Alan to do the same. Um, many, if not most communities, do set priorities, their CPAs do, I, and they say no to projects because they know they have other projects coming, but that's something that you guys should explore more in depth. I know our past practice has been one way, and, and I only mention that because um, you know, it's been the past practice, so it, it's up to the committee to decide. John's got his hand up, Denise. Yeah, I, yeah, I just said, John. <laughs> oh, I apologize. I was trying to let you guys finish. Um, so Jim McGovern is given so many earmarks a year. We know he got Montague 1.1 or 1.3 million to redo the downtown with brick, et cetera. 1.1 million for a library over in Amherst, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's reasonable for us to ask Kobe and the congressman tomorrow the possibility of a one to three million dollar earmark towards this building. I also happen to think that you may be getting money back from other projects in the uh, the near future that may be quite substantial. So I think things may work out in the mix, um, you know, over the next year. I, I, you know, Tim, correct me where I'm wrong. I don't see the economy booming still. It, it seems like it's going to either stagnate or, or stall out a little bit. And so I don't see any rush to jump on board with anything in the next like three to four months. I would almost hang out with this for a little bit and see if we can literally get our feet underneath us and go full speed ahead for spring of 24. But I don't know Julie's thoughts on that either. Uh, just the bidding process, procurement process, et cetera, et cetera. It would be 24 anyway, John. Not, you don't really have yeah. to make any delay. Right. I mean, John, a lot, you know, a lot of things are in process right now. You know, for instance, we're going to, um, we're going to resubmit an expression of interest for the 1821 building for trans, uh, transitional senior center community services to use the big room. And, um, and we won't even know that we'll, we will um, submit that by March, I think 15th, the full grant will go in on 
I think June 1st, and we wouldn't even hear anything until November. We wouldn't get money until January. So you know, it's a very long process for that. So I don't think anything's, and then as far as the, um, as far as the uh, geothermal exchange, hopefully we're gonna hear about that in March, which is coming up. So I think some of these things will finally align at some point. And yeah, just question if we should be putting in our, our full uh, architectural fee this year between Julie, Tim, and the group. Uh, do we ask for another one or $200,000 to really get it up to 80% architectural design by this fall and go forward with the full building? I it, think we can determine that, John, by whether we, Jim is favorable towards the earmarks, because the earmarks will come out in the month of September because the federal um, budget year ends September 30th. So sometime in the month of September would be the earmark availability. Right. Okay, but but I, you know I, I think in all the different conversations that that I've been part of, um, I think that you know we since we've got a we've got a lot going on we've got senior housing at this point we don't seem to need money things are under control right that's what Louie said the Leary lot we've got money for that the town common well that's a problem because we're underfunded by about five hundred k but that's the process eighteen twenty one we don't know how much that's going to cost but I think the main focus is really the 1888 building to really go for, go for the big the big win <laughs> so that you know that's a conversation whether that's yeah finance wise i tim had all the numbers worked out pretty hardcore i think we could borrow up to 4.5 or 5 million from cpa but we also you know we may have in the next year one or two million sitting there that we can allocate towards this project and if congressman mm -hmm. mcgovern can get us one to three million that pushes us up towards the nine million dollar mark without affecting the tax base. Am I off, Tim, or was that? I I think that um, I need to talk to Brenda more about um, what is actually available. But let Jim Jim's had his hand up, so yes. Uh, my question: uh, This is an observation rather than a question. It is when we got the town to vote in favor of the library. There was an awful lot of uh, uh, expression of discontent about why aren't we spending this on the senior center and I feel like that's gonna you know that was sort of an implied that's next on the list and if it looks especially bad if the town is getting itself some cushy new town offices instead of the senior center Jim, Jim, that's that's not going to happen. Okay, I'm just because, pointing this out. Well, nothing. The 1888 is not going to happen before you know we find out about the 1821. The money that we're putting in is for pre-development. You know, there are a number of things that have to happen before anything can happen. So, um, you know, a, a bunch of this is going to take a number of years. Julie, you with your I, hand up. I want both buildings preserved, but yeah. you know, I'm anticipating what we're going to hear. At right. the town meeting. <laughs> I think that's a an excellent point, and I am sure that we will hear that. I think the argument for 1888 is that that is one path towards getting the senior center a space that is all on one level and accessible. So the senior center could go into the current town hall building, but not if the town hall people are in there. Um, Carolyn doesn't like that argument, but um, no, no, I'm, <laughs> that I'm that's my. Like I mean, like that's my entire vision for getting the mm -hmm. town hall moved into the 1888 building. Is that the current town hall? I think is a much better. If if those are the two options, putting senior center in the 1888 building or putting senior center in the current town hall, I would put the senior center in the current town hall because the floor, like it's a total ground level access to it. It's got that big open room in the middle. Um, it has, there. there's, you know, a huge amount of space in that building, but not unless we move the people that are in there out of it. I, I don't think anyone disagrees that the 1888 building has to go on first. I mean, we so saw it. I'm yeah. getting a lot of argument from the town building advisory committee actually. Um, about why don't we put the senior center back in the 1888 building? Why are we doing this at all when it costs this much money? 
um, that kind of thing. So there, there's definitely some, um, a lot of discussion out there about other options and they're throwing options out like, well, what if the senior center went into the like back half of the Waitley town hall or, you know, just trying to come up with other, um, inexpensive options. So, yeah, and right before, before that, Julie, I think you were talking 1821 building. That's what we're talking about as a transitional senior center. Plus for a final senior center, a permanent senior center, it's not, unfortunately, it's not just up to Deerfield, it's Waitley and Sutherland too. And even to get the 1821 as a transitional senior center, we still have to have them agree. And I'll tell you, it's, it has not been fun. So we're gonna be doing a walkthrough whenever Jennifer sends out I, I know that everyone's, you know, said when they are available, I was going to walk through it with them so that you, to answer any questions that they had, but that's just a transitional senior center. And then the board of oversight, they've got to make that final decision. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. Andrea. So I, th this seems to me to be the right or, uh, group to ask this question of when Yankee Candle moves out of its corporate building, what is going to happen with that building? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a so, commercial space. Yeah. Okay. Yankee Candle's we... lease goes through December of 26. So the building has to be paid for through December of 26, number one. Number two, it's 75,000 square feet. <laughs> That's nothing that we as the town should even be closely interested in. Senior housing, okay. massive project. I don't know, but I would hope like Bay State Medical would bring offices up here. I, I don't know otherwise. Okay, but but a floor could be used. I'm just I'm just you know throwing it out there, wondering if it could you know serve the senior center, town offices, etc. So I just wanted to say that you know, to the group. I've heard group. that elsewhere. Oh, Jim and then Carolyn. Well, my only observation is that. And this is going to be a little sarcastic and snarky. Yeah, we can move everything out there and then have our collection of unused buildings pristine. <laughs> yeah. No, I, so I may actually, and I, I was actually thinking that senior housing could then be all downtown, not to have the senior housing in the um, but if office building. The, but if all the services are unreachable, right. as they're on Route Five. And there's no public transportation, and there's no sidewalks, right. and the bike there's a bike lane that'll kill you. I'm pretty sure that it's not conducive. Personally, I, I mean, I think we should be revitalizing the center. Um, and I know you're, you're just saying this as an idea, and I think everything should be explored. I agree. Um, yes. but we're, we're we're getting a little drift here, so okay. I'm cool. bring it back. <laughs> I just want to say that. The cost per square foot for commercial um, space is, is makes it unattainable for a public use. Okay. And I'm going to remind everybody to raise their hand like a good little student. <laughs> okay. I just, I wanted to finish up with Emma because she never got to ask, ask or find a library question. Then I'll move on to the next person. Uh, qu very quickly. Uh, I mentioned that Jason Curtis was a new member of the energy committee and he's a very, very qualified engineer. And I recommended that he be on the library committee building, the library building committee. I didn't just curious if anything had happened with that. Um, I, I mentioned all of these things that were brought up at the last um, CCI meeting to the um, library trustees at our last meeting. And there was, there was a lot of pushback. Uh, there is great reluctance to make the building committee larger. There is a real fear that it will become unwieldy, um, you know, and in, in, in with with too many cooks, so to speak. Do you have um, local? Do you have local engineering experience on the committee? Yeah, um, um, Julie, for one, um, and I believe um, 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 <laughs> the guy who's the Greenfield Building Inspector is on it. And um, Burn the, something or other. That, Eva, that, that Ava, Ava Tor is on it. Or yes. Okay, so that that is question. I just want to make sure. Um, but, so the um, other comment that happened though in that discussion was that 
when something comes up in the course of the building committee that pertains to energy, they will reach out to the energy committee to make sure you know, like all the excellent the meetings are open meetings, but, um, but then attending all meetings is, yeah, but then you don't have to pick out the drapes, right? Right. <laughs> That's good. Thanks. All right. Thank you. So let's see. Next up, Lily. I'll unmute myself. I'll just read really quickly from my committee report. As I put in the drive, as you all do, no doubt. Um, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Um, we have submitted our Community Preservation Committee application uh, requesting about $86,000. Uh, much of the work, well, 25,000 of it is for uh, architect architectural sightings. So to look at the municipal campus and come up with about three different places in how senior housing could fit in there. Um, we are also doing the ANRAD submission for the municipal campus to CONSCOM in, in this application. Um, conceptual design test fits, architectural plans. We've also submitted to cover for geotechnical borings and soils report, an initial um, arborist serve, survey, stormwater test pits, geothermal feasibility report, master planning, environmental assessment, and environmental screening of hazardous materials. Um, some of these things may be covered by grants like the geothermal grant, but in case they're not, we figured let's we're going to get it in there and we're going to get this um, the campus work done. I uh, have a draft copy of the utility map that was completed by senior housing, which I'm sure you can all see. <laughs> Read this, right? Anyway, it they did the utility delineations and all that kind of stuff. And that will be shared with um, who? Would you guys like us to send it to the building committee? Where would you like it to go? So um, I need an answer. Um. I'd love for you to bring it to the um, town campus uh, working group. Okay. That's yeah, that makes sense. That, that, yeah. <laughs> it is very tiny print. I will just say that. But um, I will. I will certainly. I can email it to everybody as a draft. How about that, Jim? That sounds great, Mr. Oh. Chair. Okay. So um, the. The what we've completed so far, the site feasibility, the uh, field work is complete. The utility markings, and they're currently working on the property lines. They think that's about three weeks out. Still to come are now. This is <laughs> inverts of structures. Somebody in this room knows what that is, but um, I don't. But they're doing it. Um, and wetland delineation, but that's going to wait until spring so that they can get the real deal. Um, we uh, Senior housing is going to take two weeks off and take a breather. And then we will be meeting with the Deerfield Women's Club to begin outreach to talk about the municipal campus. And we um, are reaching out to the Senior Center to do a presentation at the Senior Center about the campus and senior housing because everybody that I've spoken to on the topic of senior housing alone says start your public outreach early and do it often and that's it for senior housing just like voting <laughs> early and often <laughs> yeah right <laughs> um Andrea Hi, uh, Open Space doesn't have a lot to report. Um, we've continued to attend these webinars um, that talk about how to get grants. Uh, the last one was about how to talk to landowners. Um, and that was um, of a little bit of interest um, and it learned that different uh, towns have done things in different ways. And the one who 
did everything on paper. They thought that was great. And then they had a terrible time uh, uh, getting all the data uh, into an analyzable form. Um, so otherwise I don't really have anything much to report. Any questions? No, I don't know. Well, I don't have a question for you necessarily, but you just, I just thought about this. You know, Lily, did, who did the research on all the different acreage, all the different plots of land that we have in Deerfield? Oh, we've, 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 we've included that. I got information from Lily about that, mm -hmm. forwarded it to um, um, the young woman who helped us from FERCOG, whose name, mm -hmm. Allison Gage. And uh, so it's included in our- Okay, okay. well, the reason why I'm report. asking is, you know, when I was, I was having a conversation with Casey and talking about all the different land we have and, you know, is there, I mean, are we gonna take a look at the land that we have and to see, can we potentially utilize any of that land or, can we sell off some of those parcels if they're not land if they're not landlocked if they're accessible you know to bring in money for the town carolyn um there is an expense related to that and we need to set aside money er, which we should mm -hmm. be doing every year to market any um parcels but you have to do a deed search you mm -hmm. have to um declare it surplus it has to go to town meeting to release mm -hmm. it and then you have to sell it at least for, and you got to get an appraisal because you have to sell it at market value market by value. law. So it, it is actually a kind of onerous procedure, but that doesn't mean that we can't do it. We just have to make up our minds that we're going to, I mean, it's one more thing on our to-do list for staff mm -hmm. to do, and then we have to follow it through. And okay. It just hasn't been done. No, 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 that's good. And, and just before Lily, you know, there that could potentially be um, a graduate student at UMass who does who does that. I mean, I don't know. Okay. Never know. Okay. To utilize Lily. But one, I mean, one thing that we had talked about in senior housing and when we presented this inventory to the select board is the fact that there is something like 60 acres or 80 acres of forest that we have that could be um, done as a carbon swap, which would generate some income for the town, preserve it, not require transfer of ownership or anything like that. And so um, is that something that would be brought to open space or the energy committee? Hmm. Where should that go to? Energy committee. The open space committee is focused on trying to get a grant to establish walking trails. That, that there are only, there are four, maybe five of us on the committee. Um, we're looking at pl places all across, all around town. We do have um, a little um, neighborhood group has joined our effort. Uh, they are called something like the Pecumtuck Neighbors, I don't know, Walking Association. And, um, and so they're helping with that. But I don't think we would have the wherewithal to do much beyond that. Okay. To be honest, so, um, and, <laughs> and so, the, last, that's a pretty clear the last thing I wanted to say is that we are meeting next week. So, um, were you finished, Lily, and then MA? I was just going to ask MA if she would be interested in taking that on. Um, not really, but I I see its value. I um. Let me let me run it by the committee. I have a funny feeling we're feeling a lot like we're overwhelmed too. Um, I don't I don't even have any idea what the process is and and who's giving away the money. And a lot of the a lot of those, and maybe this isn't an issue for us, but a, a lot of those uh, you know, the, there's a lot of dubious uh, thoughts about you know you know the whole that whole concept because were you ever going to cut it down anyhow and the whole point is is you're preserving something that was going to be cut down and therefore it has a cash value uh you know i i i i, I don't i don't know and i don't know who's giving away the money so if anybody has any information i would love some initial information about the programs that exist 
So I was going to suggest Mass Trails may have some information. Uh -huh. um, so Alan may know a little about that. And the other thing I just wanted to say, I'm sorry, Carolyn, to hold you up. There were four trucks parked on the street, on my street, in front of the town forest this week, multiple days. So I don't know, I, I, there was no sound of chainsaws. I don't know what they were doing in the town forest, but um, there's some activity happening. They did not tell any of the neighbors, um, but there were four tree service trucks and they were empty. <laughs> and the folks who were in them were somewhere up in the woods of the town forest this week. Oh, interesting. Carolyn? Uh, well, we don't know. I don't know anything about what's going on in the town forest because, um, you know, we haven't had any forest management plan or anything as far as I know. So um, if there's people up in our town forest, then that is totally not supported by the town or not any initiative. Mm -hmm. by the town. Um, but mm -hmm. I happen to know that um, I believe it's Westfield, but somebody took their town forest and and put it on the California carbon market and um, <laughs> able to fund their parks and uh, with their annual uh, revenue. And that was the kind of idea that we had um, that we would take all our forest land and put it on the market and get use that to fund the, you know, the revenue to support um, the operation of the park. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's not a huge amount of money, but Three or four thousand dollars, or ten thousand dollars, depending on how much acreage we could get, would be enough to cover, you know, some minimal maintenance. And 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 we, as a select board, have really want to make a commitment. Anything that we do, we put together a maintenance operational plan. And so that was one of the ideas. But it has been successfully done by other towns in Massachusetts. Ma. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. Do you know the name of the trucks that were up there? No, I'm sorry. If I find them again, I'll take a picture. They, I mean, there was no one in them because I would I stopped to, to look. Well, it's not top, not it was, a, it was some kind of tree service that was that I didn't know. So it's not, I don't know how local they are. For, for, for well, ignorance, where is the town forest that you're referring to? It um, part of it fronts on Steam Mill Road. It goes over Pecumtuck, okay, and sure. I think it goes across over the Pecumtuck Ridge and down the other side to okay, uh, so River Road. The power company was doing some uh, right of way clearing along there. They've done that the last few years. Yes, I know my yeah. now my backyard floods because they cut down a lot of trees. Right. But that was before COVID. But um, no, this is just recent. There was no, and and I'm on, there were, I'm, I could not change us. Okay, maybe yeah. they were scouting it out. All right. Okay. Once again, a little drift here. So I'm going to bring it back and <laughs> you know, and uh, have Tim give a report. Um, okay. So um, the last week and a half, I've been working with um, 12 library communities to get a library letter written to them, Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, um, asking them to support working with the legislature to give us more money. Candace and I sent that letter off today. Um, we consulted with our senator and representative to find out what they actually wanted the letter to say, because there's, there's a little bit of a kerfluffle between the legislature and the MBLC because of the way they've been, the MBLC has been doing business. So we hope that's successful. Um, we have a meeting, as everyone knows, with Jim McGovern tomorrow at 1.30 in Town Hall. We're going to present updates on the town campus. Um, we're going to ask him for earmarks. And we're going to ask him for um, USDA rural development pockets of money that we can pursue um, and to get pick his brain for any other ideas. We're also going to ask him for help getting Marky and Warren to give us another earmark for the town campus. Um, <clears throat> we are all of the discussions we've had tonight about forest land, town owned land, um, et cetera, is just another justification for the planner slash grant writer position that I believe the planning board and that uh, the, that the town, uh, the select board 
uh, under our auspices has pushed forward for the finance committee's consideration. Um, I think there's a realization that there's so many things that we don't accomplish because we don't have somebody dedicated to accomplishing them that I think this is a great example of one of those things um, that uh, would fall into the lap of that person. So, um, and I think that's basically it. I wanna thank Julie for all the hard work she's been doing with the, you know, the TBAC because there's a lot on their plate. And the final thing I'll say is that the, um, the campus is interdependent. I mean, if we do one thing, it's gonna make something else possible. And uh, at the beginning of this discussion, one of the things we sort of focused on was preserving these buildings. Now that the price of preserving these buildings has escalated, it doesn't mean that the desire to do that is not still there. And you know we have to be open-minded about what we're gonna do with each building. That means that I may have to give up on some of my desires and somebody else is gonna have to give up on some of their desires. But I think we ultimately should hope that we can get clarity from the government about how much money we're gonna get from the federal government and um, he may have some really good ideas that our planner grant writer could pursue for us. Um, and the select board has finally discussed, although we don't like this idea and neither does Casey Warren, using some ARPA money, it's one-time money available to do physical infrastructure. But um, this year, uh, the government opened up the possibility of spending money on grant writing. So if that's our only option, we, we will certainly consider doing that. Um, it would be better if we put it in the budget, tried it out and saw if it worked, uh, saw if it brought results to the town um, because we know that we miss out on a lot of opportunities on a regular basis. So when you say grant writing, um, I know that one of the challenges is even if you're awarded a grant, you have to manage it and the planner you, grant writer uh, administrator okay thank you i was gonna say because i think casey would stab us in our sleep if she found out we were hiring somebody to just get a brand casey was in on this discussion <laughs> yeah no no you definitely need to lighten the load um and probably all of you are aware that we um we offered Sarah Kimball the job to become the treasurer collector and she accepted it. And uh, now we're looking for a part-time, or, or, or the assistant treasurer collector. Is that right, Carolyn? Yes, so, her, Sarah's current job. Yep. Yeah. So wow. that's it. Thank you. Anything else, Tim? Nope. You know, this is, this is terrible, but I can't, did, <laughs> I was looking at it and I usually put everything in my folder. Did we have a meeting after the MMA conference or this is our first one? This it's is the first one. one. This is the okay. first one. So you're supposed to report on it. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know. I just, yeah, yeah no, I'll, I'll, I'll go up, I'll report on some of my stuff and then Tim and Carolyn can add to that. Tim, do you have your hand? I'll up? just say one final thing. We, um, the, the DA and the nonprofits sent us a preliminary 3% concept idea about how to possibly work at the uh, old Deerfield wastewater treatment facility. Um, it's it's not a fully, fully they're gonna do a lot more work, another two months worth of work before we actually see um, any kind of cost estimate. And we're gonna um, be communicating with them some things they need to keep in mind as they develop this alternative. Um, so that's that's a positive. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks, Tim. Um, Emma? No. Nope. Oh, okay. I just wanted to have my hand go away. My, I'm getting dizzy. Like the board keeps moving back and forth here. <laughs> Hollywood Squares. Okay. So I've got a couple of things. Um, finally, did get for complete neighborhoods. I think I mentioned that we'll be having uh, nothing is set in stone yet, but we'll, they will be doing um, the group that we're using, which of course I can't remember who they are, but we're gonna be doing a couple of public forums, but I think the first meeting will probably be just with CCI to talk about, um, I've given them information on what we're currently doing in town, all the different projects, but we'll pr they probably need a little bit more time 
and to see how they want to move forward. Then they're going to come actually physically and, and look around campus. And then after that, then they'll have a public meeting because they want to, you know, public buy-in is very important, although, you know, so they'll be doing some of that through um, the Complete Neighborhoods Grant. So I'll keep you posted on that. Um, as I said before, I'll be doing a walkthrough of the church with Trevor and the Board of Oversight. And I guess Jennifer Remmler just has to set the date, but I think people have responded to that. Uh, the second thing I did mention that we will be submitting that expression of interest um, for the community one stop. And it doesn't mean that's just to get feedback on the grant, which is really helpful, but we can submit as many grants as we want to to Community One Stop. I think the two things that you really have to keep in mind are um, how's it going to, is it going to serve the community? Community is the, is the biggest thing with that. And the second thing is when you do get funded, will you be able to complete the tasks that you said within a specified period of time? So, you know, those are all things to consider. And then I guess the third thing is, is that if you're submitting multiple grants, don't have them compete against each other. And, you know, unfortunately there is a, I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, there's another um, party in town that wants to develop the, oh God, out in the East Deerfield, you know, the rail- Old Bird Seed, it's the old Bird Seed building. Oh yeah. So, okay, it's private. so private. Yeah, it's, it's private, but they can put in for uh, a one-stop grant. And, you know, that may be tough and we may actually be, be competing against them for money in the town. I don't know what's gonna happen, but we're gonna continue and move forward, forward with that anyway. So, yeah, just heard about that. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know what their plans are. Um, and then I guess the last thing is the MMA conference. And the only thing I can say is that, I mean, it was really interesting. There were, we were among 1200 people of <laughs> whom I knew maybe, you know, like a handful. Anyway, um, the only, I think, contact that was any significance that I made was to um, Kim Driscoll, the, our new Lieutenant Governor. I gave her a postcard of CCI and told her very briefly about what we do and said, please, we really want you to come out and visit the campus. Carolyn also gave her a card, but I guess we've got to follow up on that. So Carolyn and Tim, you know, you were both there. Do you have other things to add about well, that? Other than double teaming uh, Kim Gris Driscoll, uh, we, we had a very successful um, MMA conference, I think. Um, I met with Sean Cronin, who is um, director of um, local services and his assistant, uh, Lisa, that helped us before get a waiver for foundation funding and they agreed to help us again. So that's like 400,000 in the foundation funding that we um, will be getting, which is wonderful because otherwise that's a huge impact on us. Um, what that what that ent entails is, is every income that is associated with a nonprofit property in the 01342 district um, is eliminated from the formula and um, the in the 01373 um, zip code all the Waitley addresses that are a part of our zip code which is about a third of our zip code those incomes are eliminated too so it's about last year it was about 400,000 so I don't know what it's going to be this year because it goes up a little bit every year but it's at least 400,000. So that's a huge impact to us. Um, so that's going to go through. It's just what makes me nervous is I'm the only one that keeps pounding on this because I know it's cash. So um, somehow we've got to make this permanent and not be this year to year thing because sooner or later, Sean's going to leave and Lisa's going to leave, you know, retire. So this makes me nervous. Um, I'm on the... Um, mass interlocal um, insurance advisory committee. I was asked to be on that. And uh, because of my insurance background, I think, I don't know, somehow I got on it. And um, that's really great because um, I think there's gonna be quite a few risk management programs that we can participate in that will keep our insurance down uh, because of climate change, because of the huge insurance losses um, 
for all these storm events that we've had all over the country, cost of insurance is skyrocketing. This is kind of like what happened to the health insurance, you know, um, about 10 years ago when it was just, you know, 20% increases. It was just going crazy. This is what's coming. So um, I feel very grateful that, you know, this opportunity has come along because I think this is really going to help us cut our insurance. Uh, we were able to go to enough, um, you know, uh, workshops that counted towards our Maya discounts that we got 5% off for insurance this year because we <laughs> put our little QR codes, which I did successfully too. So we got enough credits and um, I, you know, we were able to connect. I, I did go to a couple of workshops about private roads that was nothing new, um, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, we, ha we had some good workshops. I don't know, Tim can report the workshops that he went to um there after a while it's not hugely new information but this was tim's first year so <clears throat> report what was great for him mm -hmm. um so yeah i went to sort of a introductory seminar which was learning about what mma does then i went to um a session about new things that municipalities should be considering with regard to legislative changes and laws, um, which was sort of more interesting if you were a lawyer, there were a lot of sort of interesting legal twists and turns, didn't really have any practical application. Um, but the final one that I thought was useful was um, the municipal aggregation of electric uh, you know, supplies, and we currently are in one, and we've got a nine point something. Up, I don't know what is it, point nine four. Uh, it's a very low electric rate, and Emma could probably say what it is, um, but it is. It's it's not nine nine point four cents per, per kilowatt, kilowatt hour. hour. Yeah, and so there was a big discussion as, as about opposed to. Uh, Eversource right now, which is like 24, I think, 24 cents. There, there, there were um, rates as high as like 35 cents a kilowatt hour. And some people who were in the, in the, uh, at the end of their aggregation got hit with this uh, surge that was caused by COVID related effects. Um, we are now going to start with Colonial Power, which is our aggregator to start looking at the, um, the futures market to determine when we should lock in a new rate um, with 11 other communities. And I think there's interest, MA, you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, to expand the group of towns we're working with to have a larger buying power. So the, the, I, just, just a small correction. Last time, and I assume it's still true, it doesn't affect our buying power that much, but it's beneficial because we all go into it individually. And they said that it really doesn't, change that much but um you know it can't hurt and and it's certainly better than trying to do it alone because right. colonial power is doing all the work for us right so that was that was probably the most meaningful one and shortly after that meeting i met one of our colonial powers persons at the mma and and we're now in the process of looking for our next rate and hoping to lock it in for another three-year period Assuming it's good. When Assuming we, it's good. When do we expire? January 1st, 2024. And the nice thing about aggregation is that the, the state rightly set it up so that you have to opt out. And if the town adopts it, you're in unless you opt out. So anybody who thought they were clever and opted out has probably gotten hurt. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean it, the opposite couldn't happen, but... Uh, Anyway, it saves a step of having to get everyone to buy in, communicating to every single person in your town, do you want to buy your electricity from this source? So it also protects people from the Wild West crazy people who offer you great bargains on your electricity for the first six months and then raise the rate and won't let you get out. Right. Okay, I guess. Um... Let's see. Before we go, is there any other business? And then we have to set the next meeting. Julie? 
I just have a question. Was there any discussion about town meeting and the format of it and whether the full town meeting will be on the 24th or whatever it is of April? Um, Carol? We, I think most people are, are willing to um, move town meeting, but it has to be a town meeting vote. So we just opened the warrant. We probably will put something on the warrant, but what may happen, we'll see how things play out, but we may have a meeting on the 24th of April, just open it and then continue it because you can't do anything for this year anyway, Julie. But yeah. um, I think, I mean, the, the, go the new governor's wicked slow going, I mean, this is why all these things are back, all these grants are backlogged, you know, they're just not moving very fast. So, um, and I, the budget, my understanding from, you know, when I talked to Sean is that the, nothing is going to be available to anybody till March 1st. And that's the state going around just trying to figure out their budget. And then so available to us, nobody knows. You hearing this? Okay. Wait a I have two questions, um, Carolyn, when you were talking about what might happen at town meeting, will we deal with everything except the budget at town meeting? Or are you just saying that there won't really essentially- We haven't made a decision as a select please, board. Please, CPC, if, if we keep holding up CPC money, it's gonna slow things down. So I'm saying senior housing is putting in for all this work for the campus that helps the entire campus. So I would um, hope that we don't just open it and shut it but that we can take care of as much business as possible the town meeting the actual town meeting decision will be dan graves decision but the select board will have input hopefully and we have not made any decisions lily just based on okay i didn't realize that it was have enough information moderate i didn't realize it was the moderator so the town meeting is a moderator's built um meeting really quick okay yeah. uh, and my last thing was um I want to uh, echo something that Alan said earlier. The Community Preservation Committee asks that you all please get your applications in so that we can um, understand what we're we're looking at and um, figure out if we if we need to have that whole conversation that Tim brought up before about recommendation and how how do we recommend priorities. So. Um, we, it would just be good. I, ju I just want to say, Lily, that it doesn't really matter when town meeting is. Money still won't be available till July first, no matter what. Not, but community preservation committee will be. That money exists. No, what it, do you mean? It, it it it's available July first. Sean's nodding his head. Don, oh, really? I mean, uh, we've got we've got the leave? we have five hundred thousand dollars in senior housing set aside. We have. I'm, I'm wrong. I thought I thought well, we had to wait till one July first. No, we just need it. The money exists. It's in the town's pot, okay. and um, maybe then we could recommend CPC stuff be voted on. I don't know. That's my misunderstanding on that, Lily. I thought it was only available till on July first, new fiscal year. Okay. Well, yeah, you guys can figure that part out. John? Uh, two things quick. Yeah, raise and appropriate is absolutely July 1st because it comes from taxation. Anything that's an existing fund, free cash, community preservation fund is available. Effective closure of that meeting. So you do have to wait till the meeting certified, technically. No big deal. The other problem that we run into is the bylaws state when annual town meeting has to take place. So we can open it and continue it, but then you can't introduce new articles. So we have to totally print the articles. So it does get a little convoluted, but it can be done. So yeah, Carolyn's spot on, but the bylaws dictate that it has to be the last Monday in April. Unfortunately, even at 7 p.m. We can't even hold, we can't even start it at 6 p.m., believe it or not, just be unless we change the bylaw. Well, that's why town meeting has to decide, you know, a permanent change. And, and Julia suggested some language that we could use as a basis for altering the bylaws concerning when the election takes place and when the annual meeting takes place. And this is all part of you know the budget process being so 
dysfunctional or it doesn't fit in with our our way of doing business is that right julie i mean we don't know enough early enough to make informed decisions yeah <clears throat> so that's something we can vote on in town meeting the the april 28th the 24th we can vote to change it change the bylaws or we, next year for the following year not yeah. for the continuation of this meeting just checking yeah yeah well, thank you, everyone, for the lively discussion this evening. So, how about we set our next meeting? Tim, do you have any indication when you're going to hear about the geothermal? It's just sometime in March. March. Okay. Yeah, could be the well, could be my birthday, the twenty eighth. It could be could be the first of March. Oh, is that a hint, Tim? If it's my birthday, we'll all celebrate. If it's not, so isn't it mine? Oh no my God! And I'm not raising my hand. <laughs> Who's my father-in-law's? Cake. We'll all be serving cake. <laughs> I was thinking of something a little stronger, but you know, <laughs> I think I think happening. by March we'll need something stronger. Yeah. All right. So so um, yeah, March is two weeks away. Any thoughts on our next meeting? Uh, March 1st. I, you know, I don't think we're going to have enough information. Oh, okay. Um, there's a lot of financial stuff going on. I, I almost think that we should go down to the 29th. That is an okay. off Wednesday. That's and that will give uh, the Finance Committee and CIPC. Mm -hmm. unfortunately, right. unfortunately, the Community Preservation Committee has their final approvals meeting that night, and it will probably, depending on what everybody in this room is up to, it may very well. It, it's scheduled for 6.15 till um, 8.30 right now. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, How about the 30th, March 30th? I know yeah. it's a Thursday. Yeah, senior housing could probably give it up. Well, Does that work? That's Does that the fifth, work? Lily, that's the fifth Thursday of the month. So we will have four senior housing meetings prior to that. So okay. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think we'll okay. give it we can give it up if it so, works for everybody. The 30th. Is, good. is that good? The yes. March 30th at 6 30. Um yes. And um let's let's sort of be the focus or the agenda focus on this is to try to organize our financial situation. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, anybody who wants something on the agenda, send me an email and I'll put it on the agenda. Okay, okay. And, that, and you know, another thing is that, I'm sorry, and I forgot to mention, but I did have a conversation with Annie Curtis because she had a conversation with MA because her husband's on the energy committee and she was saying, I guess MA said, that it would be really helpful to be on CCI. So I did have a conversation with her. And I, I mean, I think it's a really great idea too. So I don't know whether Annie or one of the other two new members, I said, I, I just said to her, I said, that's great, that's exciting. And we want members who are active members who will show up at meetings and who will contribute to meetings. <laughs> so I made that pretty clear. And she was, she was, right on top of it. So she has yeah, got back to me. Excuse me. I think that's a good idea because it's it's pretty hard yeah. for Darius because he has well he, never, he he doesn't come. So no, so I mean I, I I just you know maybe I'll get back in touch with her and then I'll let her know when the next meeting is or whoever. But I guess there are two new members as well. I don't know who they are. I don't know who they are. Okay. So it'll be Annie or one of the other two members. So, but, yeah, but, but thank you. So anything, so Carolyn, I, I can put that on the agenda now. What do you want the? Well, I just think that we need to, to look at the financial, all these projects that we have going, I think we need a, to focus on a financial summary based on what's happening in the, within the next month. Okay, then I, th I think what would be really important is not just to do, you know, we can sit there and what if, till the cows come home on the meeting. So I think it would be really important. I think Tim and I have both collected information so far that Ju you know, Julie's given us. And um, I've got, yeah, I mean, Julie gave us a lot of information. So 
anybody who has information on any specific project that you think we don't have, send it to me. I can send it out to the group in the email so that everyone knows, and then we can have a better discussion. Okay, sounds really good. Okay, that would be good. So I, I'll put that when I post the meeting, I'll send a reminder and say, please send any information that you have. So I have, I have a question for Tim and if Alan's still here, um, didn't the town common committee get funds from the CPC? $350,000. Did they already spend that money? Is that? No, it's in the bank sitting aside waiting to get mass dot to tell us what they're going to do with Parker street. And so, um, does, do they need to renew their application? How old is it? Is my question. I think they still have time because it's good for three years. Alan, do you? Yeah, I can't remember the uh, specifics, but yes, it is. It, usually there's a there's up to a three year extension, but they have to request it. Right, and I think they got it in the same cycle, Julie, that that we got the uh, money for the 1888 building, right? It, yeah, it was just this That's past. That's my recollection. We were yeah. talking about them. Yeah, this it was just this, this past meeting. Right. right, so they've got two years left. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that since Kate wasn't here, if that was a concern, but it's not, you are right. Good. All right. Yeah, and Julie, you're going to send me that most recent 1888 building finances because I seem to have misplaced it. I apologize. No, I'm moving. We adjourn. I, I said that. Way. <laughs> Julie, Julie, could you send that to me too? Because oh, to be Denise as well. Yeah. That I can pass that. I'm sorry, you made a motion. I, to I'm gonna. I'll, I'll be there tomorrow. I'm gonna cancel this other thing I was gonna do. So, I'll see Excellent. You guys. Thank you. But I'll still send it to you as soon as we're done. Do you want me to come, Denise? It's just the select board. It's just the select board. I'm gonna be there. It's just gonna ask. So it's just very focused on the 1888 building and what. Okay. What and I think USBA. So I think that's okay. the whole conversation. So we don't have very much time with him. No. Sure. no, I understand. Probably have just, since he, since his office contacted me, I just yeah. I think yeah. if you wanted to come, Andrea, it'd be good because you you know Jim and and you know yeah. um, so, right. but we're we're definitely looking for big dollars and yeah okay power with him, so and that's a okay I'll try yeah yeah so if you're there at two o'clock it may be over yeah be over. okay gotcha. Who knows? Okay, but, I'll work on that. But thanks for passing along Kelly's email because that really helps. Worked yeah. Out well. um, yeah, good. Can okay. I see you tomorrow? Give one good piece of information. Yeah. yeah. We got $450,000 earmarked from Jim McGovern's office for the radio equipment for Franklin County this year. I set up a <laughs> meeting with uh, Kobe his uh, right-hand man from uh, Western Mass and Dan Nietzsche from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. We met in my office two weeks ago. And very quickly, because I know nobody wants to stay on any later, uh, Kobe did mention, you know, they normally are giving out so many earmarks and the, the possibility of the amounts. And he said that once you go too high, that you literally get laughed out. So um, he mentioned that specifically in my office. So we do want to kind of take the, the tenor of, okay, you know, what is a reasonable request and what is possible down in DC without us getting egg on our face or the congressman yeah. versus just throwing out massive numbers because Kobe was very specific and he was naming the grants they got for central mass and Western mass and Montague and Northampton and Amherst, et cetera. Yep. But he, he specifically told Dan Nietzsche and I, that listen, if we ask for too much money, if we walk in there and ask for $8 million, they laugh us out and the committee shuts it right down. Right, I think we basically have to be guided by Jim and say, what is realistic for you to ask and, and for us to receive? Um, he was the know. one that gave us guidance last year of John up to 3 million, kind of goes under the radar, but the conditions obviously have changed with um, you know the Republicans getting the house so um, we don't know, so it will be new, new information, but I, uh, my understanding is that Markey and Warren are still able to get the up to 3 million. So I absolutely trust you guys. I just really want to relay what I heard in my office. That's all. Yep. Can I, I just have one question to ask Andrea before we go. Andrea, mm -hmm. were you 
gonna, if you come, were you gonna talk to Jim McGovern about the food part of the farm bill? I wasn't gonna talk, oh, I was gonna shake his hand, give him a hug and just, cause he knows who I am. Okay, well, I was gonna, there's a three points on the conservation part of the farm bill that I wanted to bring up with him. So maybe- At the very, very, the very, very end of the meeting. <laughs> yeah, at the very end of okay. the meeting. Okay. Very, 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 very. On the farm okay. bill. Because he's the sure. only one in New England that's on, you know, that has is interested in that. Yep, I understand. Okay, great. Okay, who made the motion? I move. We, we <laughs> second it. Do that. Does the select board have to do it first, though? Yes. Select board. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Aye. CCI. Who made the motion? Ma. Who seconded that? Mm. I do. Lee. Oh, Lily, let Lily oh, do whatever. it. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. Let's get out of here. <laughs> okay. Thank you.